What is up? What is going on, David? SVA Card Collectors. I am back in the car. It only took one day for me to be back in the car. Why? Why, Dave? Because I wasn't. I was feeling a little bit under the weather. I was a little. Had, had, had some sniffles. Had some sniffles. No, not really. Um, I don't know. I was driving around five, six hours, and I guess. Um, I don't know. Just felt bad, so I couldn't do it last night couldn't do it so I'm doing it now and what a lovely time now I was gonna think I was gonna talk about vintage today but I didn't do enough research and so I instead wanted to talk about this panini blockchain cards um, at first it sounded interesting because I didn't know how it worked. And right now, these cards, they started off at $100,000 and they are being auctioned, the Dutch, the Dutch auction, or the Dutch oven as we like to call it here. And let's see what it's at right now. It's at $78,775.51. And there's three days left, guys, so hurry. Hurry. Now, what is this all about? What is this blockchain business? Uh, Blockchain, you saw stuff coming up. Um, Bitcoin, Ethereum, I believe is also what Bitcoin is. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, It's based off of the technology that cryptocurrency is is based out of. And basically what it is is um, a way... For currency to not be manipulated you'd be able to track there's a ledger you know that's online that anyone can access and you could see all the different transactions for that Bitcoin for that dollar um, that's why the governments don't like it because it can't be manipulated it can't be changed you can't do anything to it so they're gonna say this is bad when in actuality the technology is on point. Um, Now, there's also different ways with regards to getting more Bitcoin um, called like data mining. And data mining is um, basically you have to solve problems and it will create a fraction of a Bitcoin. It'll it'll create other Bitcoins. Um, and, And basically what it is is the, the problem that's solving is it's basically um, confirming and making uh, confirming transactions of other bitcoins. Um, so it, it's really just making a check on the whole system. And if everyone's doing this check, it's just making it more and more secure. And since it's just a computer, there's really no government agency or anyone going, well, I don't think that transaction was 100% correct, so I'm going to change it up. It doesn't do that. Computers are just computing. They're using data. They're using whatever the hell they use to confirm. And once they do that, it takes a long time to, to do that. You will, they break, I guess they, you get a piece of that blockchain and it, it creates its own thing. I'm not, that's the part that I don't know. But essentially, it acts as... Um, like gold, you know, you have a finite amount of gold. If you go to a mine and you start digging and you find gold, well, now there's more gold in the system. And that's basically what this, that mining is. Um, so it's very similar to that aspect of it takes a long time for you to get additional Bitcoins because you're only getting fractions at a time. And so it's, I don't know if it's worth it. I know a lot of people did do that and they would buy these huge computers, but the amount of money that you would spend on electricity and whatnot to run the hardware to do these computations, I I don't know if it's still worth it. It might be. I don't know. I I don't know enough about it. But basically, it's a way... Cryptocurrency is basically a way for things to not be manipulated. Um, It's a digital ledger. So now that you have a somewhat idea of what blockchain, uh, you know, currents, cryptocurrency and blockchain is. What Panini is trying to do is the same thing, but with a card. And they're going, well, you're going to be able to track this card. So 
you know, you'll know where it's been. You know, you can, the buying and selling, there's no, well, there's a reason why there'll be no trimming and, you know, you won't be able to, well, it got graded and then you don't need blowout form guys to make sure that, um, you know, that stuff has been cut or snipped or whatever. Because there's two versions of these cards. There's a physical version and then there's a digital version. And everything, well, this is the only part that I don't understand. They said everything has to be sold or will be sold within the Panini universe. Basically saying that you have to go to their store and that's how you can buy and sell. Um, so you get, when you buy, you just say, hey, $75,000 sounds like a great deal for a one of one of uh, Gleyber Torres without his Yankee emblem logo. And so you go and purchase it. Now you will get, the first person who buys these cards gets a physical copy of the card, which they then said won't look, it may not look exactly the way it's pictured on there, which I don't know why. Like, did they just create these pictures and then make the card? Wouldn't you make the card first and then make these pictures? But that's beside the point. And you will get the physical and you will get the digital version of the cards. The digital versions, you can then sell on Panini's website. You can keep it. You can go, oh, let me look at all my digital cards that I have. And you would go on Panini's website and you would look at a screen and go, oh, this looks so pretty. Now, if you're the first person, you would have the physical card. So you look at the screen and at the card and go, oh, look how pretty. However, if you are the second person and the guy sells his digital version, you will just be looking at a screen going, ooh, that's all I got for buying this card? Just this picture and a screen? And yes, that's all you'll get. Now, you can also sell the physical copy. Now, I don't know if there's like rights where you can't sell it on eBay. You have to sell it on Panini. I, I don't know how that works. I can't, I don't know how they can, you know, hold you to that. So, that's the long and short of it. So, yeah. Now they have some, and once these get sold out, they'll have more. Um, but how will this work? Uh, oh, not how will this work, but like, do you think this will work out? Me, personally? No. Now, I am not young. I know the kids these days, they, um, you know, there's a lot of games. I know I play, well, I shouldn't say that. I play Clash of Clans online. When I'm on the bowl, that's what I'm doing. And looking up cards. Maybe going to the bathroom. And so, there you can buy stuff in a, you know, a realm that isn't real. <laughs> it's a computer realm. So, I don't buy stuff because you can do stuff for free and I like working my way up. But you could pay 20 bucks to skip some stuff and you'll get features and things like that. And I remember as a kid hearing about these things and going, that's stupid. Why would you spend money on a, like on a house in a game? It just didn't make sense to me. Now, I forget the name of the game. But when this first came out, there was like a game where you could do this and it was basically a world. And what ended up happening was people, you could buy houses, you could buy drinks, you could buy this, you could buy that, whatever, with real hard cash. And people started putting banks up. And people going, hey, I want to put my money in a bank so it can earn some interest. And then once they got a bunch of money, the banks closed. And they went, hey, where's my money? And it's gone because you gave your money because you thought it was a real bank when it was just a Nigerian taking all your money so um, yeah so I always think of that when I think of you know the digital realm um, now I don't think that's going to happen here with Panini they're not just going to disappear and all that nonsense but I and I don't really want to know went off that tangent maybe just to tell a little story but beside the point I don't know if kids will like this. I, this may be a thing, all kids love digital cards and that's why they're doing this. Um, but the price point does not make me seem that they want to get kids in, involved. Maybe it's just an investor. I don't know. I don't know who would want a digital card. I understand 
being the first to get this because then you get the physical card and then you own the rights of the digital card as well but why would you sell the you know why would you want to buy a digital version of a card I, I, I don't know there are going to be two separate markets for it you're going to have a physical card market and you're going to have um, a digital market um, I, I can't see them being hand in hand because yes the card exists but that's not what you're going to get or ever get you're just going to get the digital version of it so I, I don't know and um, I don't like it personally you know, I, if there was a way that you could have a physical copy of the card, I, I see, like, I don't, I don't even know. I don't know how you do it. Like, it's much easier with, like, stocks and things like that because you, cause it doesn't matter if you have a stock in hand. No one gets, you know, you can, but no one has a stock thing and they, you know, they look, oh, one share of Facebook and they're just looking at it. So, um... You know, you can keep it in the digital world and it doesn't matter. You just know that, hey, this Facebook is worth however amount of, do- however amount of dollars and that's it. So with the card, there's a lot of other things involved than just the player you know, and the autograph and the relic. You know, yes, they can have all three of those components, but which part of the patch or which part of the jersey did you get? Um, is his signature legible? Is the card centered properly? Is, you know, just all these different things that one does when buying cards and you're taking that away. Very similar to StockX, I have changed my mind and I still need to do more research. And that's one thing I'm going to do less of is talk about stuff that I see and I just read a blurb about and then I go off on a tangent when I really don't know that much about it. Um... I want to do more research on StockX, but to me, StockX, because they are out of the vintage game, which I think is an excellent thing, you can now, the the modern cards are PSA 10 for the most part, I know, but for the most part, there's a general consensus what a PSA 10 card will look like for modern cards. the 9s to 10s that you can get from a 9 to 10, yes, I know they do have that. But for the most part, we can generally agree what a PSA 10 card is. So StockX is basically going, all right, they're, they're, cre- they're using it as a stock, and people are you're, you're buying and selling. You don't see the actual card, but it exists. They have to send it to StockX, and you can see all the sales. You have a lot more data that you can take a look at, not just going to eBay solds. Um, well, it's the data that's on StockX. So I think it's actually a good opportunity because there's not too many sellers there. So you can put your card on there and whoever's coming into it to see, you're not going to have as many eyeballs as you would on eBay, but whatever eyeballs are going to it, they're going to see your card because there's not that many of them. So it may be something that you would want to do. Um, But that's for a different time and place and whatever. But long story short, I don't really care for the Panini blockchain. Um, Unless you're buying, you're getting the actual physical card. I, I don't see the, I just don't see the value. I don't see why you would want it. You know, maybe, maybe, um, it gets manipulated so maybe you get like five or six guys with a ton of money spending money on these cards and really bringing up the value of these digital cards people will come and go wow these things are worth a lot of money and start to top in they really don't care about it they just want the money they're really in that and and that's what it is it's going to be some perceived value because other people paid this extravagant amount of money that's the only thing i could see um because I, I can't see anyone going, hey, you want to see my digital card collection? Yeah, let's pop up on my screen. No one's going to care. Everyone's going to look at you like you have five heads. So um, that's, that's that, guys. Um, SVACardCollectors.com. Also download the Flick Chat app. I also have the Facebook group. Um, yeah.
I will tomorrow, I'm supposed to, and I think I still will have it, the Facebook Live. It'll be in my group. Um, it'll be through the Blue Jeans app. If you download the Flick Chat app or go into my Facebook group, we'll have a link there. Um, and then probably moving forward, I may do some different things. Um, but tomorrow we'll do it um, and we'll, we'll get our talk on. And again, it's not people that are on there. If you're looking at it, we're not talking as the authority. We're just asking questions and, you know, strategizing if you want, thinking of things, stuff that's coming out, what, what other collectors think. You know, that's, that's the biggest thing. Um, questions that you may, may want to know, I should be able to answer them. If not, there may be other collectors there that, that know the answer. And so that's what's a great thing about it. It's basically for the collectors and investors. It's not me just talking about what I want to talk about. So, all right, guys, you know what to do. Buy some cards and go broke. Later.